welcome to the channel. I am Mr. Sensible. This will be the last regular episode before Christmas. The only other thing coming is tomorrow night, the 20th of December, the Conspiratard Cheese Awards 2019. It will be premiering at 2100 UTC. I would like to see you there. Today's episode is different than normal because I made an open invite to people to submit one minute debunk videos. There are no requirements other than it should be about flat earth or other conspiracies. No special effects are required. No fancy music or mixing. You could even do it on a phone. Here are the submissions. I hope you enjoy them. The first submission is from B-Ball for Life. really effective people that's great and I mean it's quite a challenge I knew that it would be a challenge to try and debunk something in one minute and I think you did that visually and with some beautiful sound in the background thank you the next entry is from Mr Andreas L hello my name is Andreas L I often hear that the world can't be a globe because I don't see those buildings over there leaning away from me. Well, actually, the buildings have to be quite far away to lean only one degree. You can see here 111 kilometers for just one degree. Can you tell which one of these buildings are leaning away from you? Well, of course, the Leaning Tower of Pisa, it's in the name, but actually, it was leaning towards you. Did you notice that? Yes, you didn't. And I guess you didn't know, Big Ben was also leaning. Bye-bye. Brilliant. Thanks for that, Andreas. I guessed that the... Uh Big Ben model would be leaning away as well but I had no idea it would be leaning that much it just shows you how your eyes can fool you thank you the next submission is from Corpus Defectus and he goes straight for the jugular he tackles a big name No fossils count as evidence for evolution. In a court of law, they would laugh at you because you bring some bones in and say, Your Honor, this is the ancestor of whales. Well, first place, there's not enough to tell what it is. It is absolutely impossible to use any fossils at all as evidence for evolution. And anybody that's telling you fossils are evidence for evolution, you talk about voodoo science, that is it, folks, okay? Cheers for that, Corpus. Kent Hovind, along with his son Eric, are two guys that I really dislike. The way that they twist the truth, hide, and even lie to the people who listen to them. There are a few killers of evolution, such as the fused chromosomes that humans have 
as opposed to the great the other great apes, such as the giraffe's laryngeal nerve going right down that neck and back up again when it could just go direct. And as you have uh, picked on, the fossils. Look at that fossil of the whale, which has hip bones and atrophied rear leg bones. Why? Brilliant, sir. Really appreciate that. Now we have a change of pace. A channel called Just Day and the underside of clouds. These are just some images from my property in eastern Washington. Hope you like them. Uh, I enjoy living over there. It's great. In this next picture, you'll see a peak to the left of the rock tower. That's Glacier Peak. At 10,541 feet and 110 miles away, it's actually pretty darn close. An interesting point is, all these pictures so far, the sun has been lighting up the underside of the clouds. Hard to explain sometimes. Unless we're living on a globe, of course. And my faithful companion, Cody, watching sunsets with me. Good dog. And, of course, after the Pathfinder landed, my grandson and I had to take a camping trip to Mars. Enjoy. Well, Dave, having spent nearly a whole minute debunking Flat Earth by showing the clouds lit from the underside, I think you and your grandson deserved a little trip away to Mars. I hope you enjoyed it. And did Cody go with you? As ever, massive thanks to all my patrons, including new patrons, John Tomchick, Paul M. Rowe, Tom C., Bjorn Kamitz, James Holman, Michael O'Quinn, Stromgel, Edwulf Sledgeverter, Opus One, Keith Morrill, Tim Boston, Alexander Henkel, Janie, Stephen Huxtable, Surf, and Paul Reap. And my newest patrons, Corpus Defectus and Number Six. I also want to wish you all a happy Christmas and a fantastic New Year. Now, what exactly does fruit have to do with the shape of the earth? I think we should allow Nalpinion to explain. If you have any doubts of the roundness of this orange, we could confirm it for you by repeating the Eratosthenes famous stick experiment where he both proved that the Earth was round and calculated its circumference. The stick at the equator doesn't cast a shadow, but the stick that is a bit higher up does. If we measure the length of the sticks, the distance between them and the length of the shadow, we can calculate the circumference. Our calculated circumference is 28.46 centimeters, which is very close to our measured circumference of 28.3 centimeters. In fact, I was only about half a percent off, which is even better than Eratosthenes himself. So we managed to figure out that this orange is actually round. We only could make a similar experiment on something bigger. See if that's round too. The Earth, for instance. Tell me more of this new science. Have you tried tin fruit? <laughs> well, enough of this gay banter. Now it's time for some serious schooling. Number six sounds like a fearsome teacher. Fearsome. So if you don't want to get a board rubber chucked at you, I suggest you sit up and pay attention. Number six is going to talk to us about the distance to Polaris. My one minute debunk for my second grade classroom in portrait mode. Distance to Polaris in height, one degree, 69 miles. Distance from North Pole, 45 degrees is 3,105 miles. 10 degrees, 5,520 miles. Using right triangle trigonometry, the tangent of 45 h over 3,105 is the height of Polaris is 3,105 miles. That makes flat earthers happy. They work with that. Now, let's do that. 3,105 miles high at a, in a 10 degree latitude, and our distance is 17,609 miles. 10 degree latitude is not 17,609 miles from the North Pole. It should only be 5,520 miles. So, how does that work? And my name is either number six, the great A2N, 
or I may change it to something else. Love you, Mr. Sensible. Sir, sir, a flirt at my homework. Number six, that was brilliant. I absolutely loved it. Thank you so much for submitting that. When I issued the open invite to people to submit one minute debunk videos, I was a little cheeky. There is that channel called One Minute Debunk and all he does is one minute debunks. So I thought it's a little unfair if he submits one of those. So I made the challenge a little harder for him. Uh, if uh, One Minute Debunk is watching this, you may enter too, sir. But since all you do is one minute debunks, I think the challenge should be for you a 30 second debunk. Half a minute? What? That's not the brand, Mr. Sensible. I, I can only half debunk something in half a minute. For example, in DeBay's Proof 121, he says the sun and moon are equidistant from Earth. In Proof 135, he says the moon is transparent. In Proof 136, he agrees that solar eclipses happen regularly. Can all of these claims be true at the same time? I don't think so. So there you go, I've half debunked something. I just didn't pinpoint it. Okay, bye! Well, One Minute Debunk, that video was a fair effort. However, I noticed that the last four seconds, you were just showing your logo and some flames. What a waste. And at the beginning of your 30 seconds, you actually spent around eight seconds moaning about only having 30 seconds. Come on, man, shape up. You could have got several more Eric DeBay truths busted there. Seriously though, 1MD, thank you ever so much for the submission. It was really appreciated. And I admit, 30 seconds is not much for anyone. I've enjoyed it and I think Arnold has too. Thanks very much for all those submissions. I really appreciate it. I'd ask everyone to go and check out some of those channels. The links will be in the descriptions below. Give them some likes, give them some love, and maybe a subscribe or two. This is probably, in fact, very likely to be the last time I see you this side of Christmas. So, I wish that you all have a great Christmas, some relaxing time with your family, and I look forward to seeing you all again in the new year. Until then, stay sensible. But you do have permission to be a little bit unsensible over Christmas. Have fun. Shut up and sit down.